Hi everyone, thanks for joining me for today's video. My name is David and this channel is Demar's Coaching. And I make a lot of videos about narcissistic people to help you guys, I hope, help recover and heal from your experiences you had with them. Today's video is, I'm hoping, answering a question for you guys. Was I in love with them? Was it just obsession? Um, they both can go together. You could be obsessed about someone you're in love with. So I hope this video will clarify some of this a little bit and I'll get at the end, I'll kind of tell you something. But, and I'm also going to, you know, obsession and possession are close together there. Possession is where they demand you, demand your love, demand your attention. So here's some signs, signs that it may be obsession. Constant contact, constant contact. I got to give you my good morning text. Good morning, honey. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Every day. And then, you know, how are you doing right around lunchtime? And then before you get off work, hey, what's up? And then after work, you know, and, and you know, it's nice to check on someone you care about. I understand that. And, and then we start getting like keeping tabs, right? Um, I want to know where people I care about, where, where, where they are, what they're doing. Maybe not all the time. Do they, I have to know where they are, but you see, it's a fine line, isn't it? And I could love somebody I'm totally obsessed with, but we're talking about narcissistic relationships and these are toxic. They just are toxic and they're, you know, the word codependent, <laughs> but the constant, constant t contact and um, and we, we fall for this stuff pretty easily. You know, if we're come, if we're vulnerable coming out of toxic relationships, we don't feel good about ourselves. We're depressed. We've had a bad experience, lost someone in our life. And we meet somebody that starts checking on us every morning, just starts, good morning, good morning, good morning. And we don't feel very good in the mornings. A good sign of depression is we wake up with bad, sad, negative thoughts, stuff like this. And someone's cheering us up. Good morning. Good morning. That could feel pretty good. We can fall for this stuff, but after a while, it become obsession, possession. The constant, constant text messages, man. The impatient, impatiently waiting for the reply. You took so long to reply. What took you so long? What were you doing? Where were you? Here's a good one. They don't want you to succeed, or maybe you don't want your partner to succeed. I go both ways. And it may seem confusing and you may say, well, no, no, they're, you know, that's not true because they were so supportive and they can be. Someone that is completely obsessed with somebody else will be completely supportive all the time, all the time, all the time. But that fear that they may lose you will, may kick in. And they really don't want you to get that job. That means you have to move further away or that... You're going to be exposed to more people around you that may like you or a job promotion, you know, a pay raise may mean you don't want this anymore, right? Fear of abandonment, right? If you, have you ever not had fear of abandonment and all of a sudden now you find yourself in complete fear of losing this person or the person completely in fear of losing you? keeping tabs on you all the time, wherever you go. So they, they'll show support. Oh yeah, that, that's great. Oh yeah, they'll help you, take you there, give you advice, cheer you on. And they really inside may not want you to succeed. Is your favorite activities together, sex and cuddling, things like this, physical over emotional? Are you lacking emotional connection? And that might be a tough one for you guys. You see, the typical victim of narcissistic relationships may be repeated and you're looking to get closer all the time with your partners and they just wouldn't, they're avoidant, yet we stayed in these relationships. What typically may be happening is that you have had emotional connection growing up, but your narcissistic partner never did. So they don't value it, don't want it, will never do it. But you value it and you want it, so you're trying. But the narcissistic person that is avoidant and doesn't want emotional connection with you is kind of the way you grew up because even though you've had emotional connection with someone, 
in your childhood, there's a lot of people that won't do it, that won't emotionally connect with you. So it's somewhat normal, kind of. But is your relationship based more on sex, physical things that you do together? From sex to fighting to, um, you know, playful things that we just do. We just do things together. Not much intimacy, talking, deep conversations about desires and fears. Did you not have that at all? Or did you have that but maybe still lacking emotional connection? Something to think about, huh? Is your time you start spending with other people limited? Is this relationship consuming? Do you stop hanging out with your friends as much, not talking as much? Maybe your partner gets jealous. Or like I was saying earlier, maybe this is the first time you might start getting jealous. Fear of losing your partner or is your partner extremely jealous and fear of losing you? You see, addictions, and that's what this could be. A relationship can end up being addictive, dependent. And addictions become number one in our lives and we don't want to lose it no matter what. And it becomes so important that we'll do anything to keep it. Yeah? Did you have a distorted view of your partner? Now that the relationship may be over, you look back, God, why did I think they're so great, so good? Why did I put them on that pedestal? Putting people on pedestals and idealizing them is kind of signs of low self-esteem. Did we have low self-esteem? Did the person idealizing you, putting you on a pedestal, did they have low self-esteem? If they're a narcissist, probably even though they might have hit it real well, but if this is an abusive relationship, that is very common. We have a distorted view of our abuser. And we could think they're just amazing, just incredible. Or we hold on to those just amazing and incredible parts. And we, it's really hard to accept the bad parts. Or after the relationship is over, we might think that they literally are the devil. The most evil person in the world. After we heal, we might find some kind of compassion towards them and say, no, they weren't the most evil person in the world. Very, very common. Um, what are you willing or what were you willing to do for your partner? How far would you go or would you have gone? How far did you go? <laughs> How far do you go? How much do you do? How much do they do for this relationship? Is it uneven, unequal, unfair, yet we stay? Is it difficult to make daily decisions without them? Do we have to share every single thing with them? If they don't have to answer the phone at the end of our day and we're trying to get a hold of them, yeah, we text this morning, we text at noon, and we text you know a couple times in the afternoon, and I text before I got off, and then I talk to them. But, but still, still, I'm just waiting to get home to tell them, you know, just some of the things. They're not that big. I mean, big things we want to share with the people that we care about, but just we realize, looking back, there's like these little things, just real little things, real little. And I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't really do anything else until I got a hold of them and shared it with them. And the longer it takes for me to share with them, I start feeling they just don't care. You ever felt like that? It might be in an obsessive relationship. And are you losing interest in other areas of your life, not just your, your relationships or time that you spend with other people? Are you losing interest? Can you look back on a relationship and say, man, before that relationship, I wanted to learn Spanish. I wanted to start learning how to fish. Um, you know, little hobbies you wanted to take, classes, school, finish school, things like this, start exercising. Maybe you just started exercising and that kind of falls to the side, kind of losing interest, stuff like that. Your future in the relationship. Are there plans? And are there plans and what are they like? Do we have realistic plans? Do we have plans at all? Do we kind of fantasize every once in a while and say, oh, we're going to get married, have children, have kids, get this job. And it's like all these kind of big, big, big things, but maybe never have taken a step to get closer to that. Never. 
We're not even engaged. Well, we got engaged. We asked to marry, but we really don't have rings and we don't have a date set and stuff like this, but we don't really talk about it much anymore. No meaning, no purpose anymore. We thought, I thought there was in the beginning. There was, you know, we made plans. We had these, talked about these huge, big things that we we're going to do together. I don't really talk about them anymore. I don't really know what the meaning or purpose of our relationship is anymore. Yet we stayed together. Here's the biggest. Are there problems in the relationship, but we don't fix them? Well, David, I mean, God, it's, you know, some problems you just can't fix. That's right. Why do we stay together? That's a real question. Why? If there's problems in the relationship, that doesn't feel good. Either I'm not getting something I need, something I want. I can't give my partner something they need, something they want. I can't feel good in this relationship, feel good about it, feel good about myself. I can't really succeed in other areas of my life or just even get by why why are we together we have problems and every relationship has problems but we have to be fixing them or ending them okay um i'd love to hear your guys's examples please of obsessive relationships you may have been in because if you've been in a relationship with a narcissist who abuses you and neglects you of everything that you need and want and may cheat on you and lie to you and make you feel like crap, why were you with them? You have to have some obsessive example. Maybe something I didn't go over today. Even. Let me know. Please. Uh, love yourself first, guys. You can always find me at daviddemars.com if you want coaching. And I'll see you again later. Bye-bye.